Well, if you've been following along, I've been working on the Singer 201-2. I did go ahead and clean and polish this front cover plate for the stitch length and put it back on the machine. It's just two screws, so I didn't feel I needed to show that on camera. And what I'm going to be looking at today is going to be the motor that mounts on the side of the machine. And let's get into that. I've got the motor completely disassembled. All the pieces are laying right here on the table. Now don't get intimidated and run away at this point because you don't have to go to the extent I did. If you want to just take the motor off and not take any of these other pieces off, the main thing I'd recommend is just go in here and clean some of the old grease out of this area where the hand wheel goes into and just put a few drops of oil on these brass pieces you can see inside of here and that will help loosen up the old grease in there and make everything spin over easier I just wanted to go ahead and take this completely apart and I'll show you the armature goes in this end of the motor through and then it'll come through these two brass bushings that's what you want to keep lubricated so the shaft when it's spinning in there has lubrication and the gear will sit in there and uh, right here's the gear that sits in there it's held on by two small screws and then these are what I call the grease ports and what's in there will be a wick it's a little piece of fabric on a spring a retaining clip that looks like this and then the cap that holds it in and I'll go ahead I'm going to go ahead and put this together I don't think I need to show all that it is a little time consuming but I will show I will and I have polished the armature on this little gasket right here you don't want to lose that if you do pull this out it's to keep oil from working its way back into this part of the motor the electronic part of the motor I have the armature back in the motor and you can see the the worm gear down here the shaft is coming through you can take this screw off the end of the motor if you want to and put one drop of oil on there and then just go ahead and tighten that back on and you could do that at any time when the machine is on the the motors on the machine next thing I'll do is put the brushes back in they do have a little curved shape to them just from wear and they will go in this way so that that curvature matches the shape of the armature and then you just go ahead and put these caps back on I just put it you can see there's a little indent inside I just put these on finger tight there's no reason to go any tighter than that and I'll just snug it down with my thumbnail that's tight enough it's just holding that brush in I'll go ahead and put the cover on here, put in the other brush, and then we'll continue. Here you can see the two grease ports that these wicks go inside. I put just a little bit of grease inside the hole here, and then you just take this wick. Hope you can see that, and you'll see the hole that it goes into. Just slide it into that. It should go into the hole and end up touching the spring that's in there, or touching the armature. And then this little clip here has got a little retaining area. You just press that in and make sure that the um, this little the spring goes under this little area right here on the clip. So I want to get the spring all the way under and then I can go ahead and push this in the rest of the way. What I'll usually do is just use one of the cap screw caps and the phone's ringing and run run it in like this, okay? Now it's pushed that retaining clip all the way in properly and I can go ahead, take my grease and just top this off with some more grease. And I did put the wick, push the wick in and out so that was covered with grease when we got started here. And as I screw this in it's going to, okay, I'm just, that, this just needs to be finger tight to it. I think they put a slot in here in case somebody over tightened it, you can still get it out. And now that's push, pushing grease up under the bottom of this brass piece inside of here to help lubricate that. So I'll go ahead and do the other side and then we'll continue. I've gone ahead and put both these caps back on. We've got the new grease in there. The wicks have been cleaned. They're back in there. We have the gear 
in here. I can turn it over like this with my hand. Okay, and then this cover part that goes over the field coil here, um, you can just slide that back on. And you don't have to take those two screws all the way out. You can just loosen them up, slide it on, and then tighten these screws back down. We've got the motor all ready to put back on the machine. Everything's been cleaned up, new grease. Wires have been inspected, they're in good condition. And you can see there's two piece spots right here on the casting where it's uh, threaded where your screw mounting screws go in. So all you have to do is slide, slide that motor back on the machine and go ahead and get those two screws started. We got both screws ran all the way in. I run both screws all the way in, back them off about half a turn because this motor does wiggle on there a little bit. So what I'm going, my goal here is to look inside this casting and as best as I can center the motor in that little area of play and then go ahead and tighten it back on. Now I don't know if that's necessary, that's the way I do it because I'm trying to get the, the this shaft and worm gear to line up as best as I can on the motor. So as you already know the 201 does have the light switch built into this junction box here and what you're going to want to do is if you did take this all the way off the one wire coming out of the machine casting will go on this side you'll see a little notch here on the top of this it will be notched on the top of the switch what you want to do is have that pointing up then you can go ahead and take your junction box and simply come in here like this and carefully work that back through the hole. Might have to grab the end of it like so. And just work that back in there. It's a little bit tricky, but you'll get it there. Just like that. We're looking at the junction box and this is unplugged. You don't want to do any of this while it's plugged in. This is 120 volts. So I'm just going to show you where the wires go. As you can see, okay, that, these are the two wires coming off of the motor. One just happens to have red on it, which is good. When you look at the junction box here, you're going to see on the far left, red, number three and number one. Number one over here and number three are power. As soon as you plug your cord in, you have power. That's why the light switch, one side of the light switch goes over here one coming out of the casting goes to number one the one coming out of the switch goes to number three this is power all the time when you're plugged in so your light will work then the way your motor gets wired onto here is the red one goes to number three and the black one goes to the middle so what that does here is it's running the power through the foot pedal through your wires back to the motor so you can control the speed of the motor so i hope that's a uh, sufficient explanation of how that works but most important thing it's showing you the correct wire way to hook your wires up to this junction box I have the small brass washers on these screw pins here we're still unplugged obviously we don't want to be having our hands in here with 120 volts and then we just go ahead and put these Bakelite caps back on snug everything down and then we'll go ahead and mount the junction box here to the machine with the one screw that goes inside of this bracket, I've gone ahead and attached this casting back onto the body of the sewing machine. And then there's one long screw that's going to hold this junction box on here. Now we're still, no electrical power is, since this is not plugged in. We're going to just do everything as safe as possible. If you're not comfortable with electricity, don't do any of this. Let somebody else do it for you or just take it into a shop and let them do it for you. But if you're comfortable with working with this wiring like I am, it's, it's no big deal. None of this is plugged in. There's no power here. And I'm just going to run that screw in. And now this, this would be the way that your machine would be when you go to buy it. And another thing I highly recommend is if you go to buy a machine like this and the seller's willing to plug it in and show you how it works, 
don't even go there unless you've looked at these wires and they look good because you're just setting yourself up to get a shot. Okay, now that I'm to this point, I am going to go ahead. Everything should be safe. And I'm way at the end of the cord, so if anything does go wrong, it's going to just blow one of the circuits in my fuse box. All right, we can see that the light switch is working properly. That's wired the correct way. And if we look right in here, we can see the drive gear uh, for the that comes off the shaft of the motor. And we can see that's spinning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this in for a while, let that grease kind of disperse in there before I put on my hand wheel and just kind of run the motor since I did clean everything and readjust everything uh, I just want to run this for a while before I put everything back together so really now all you have to do is put a little bit of oil on the shaft here so I machine oil on the shaft where your uh, hand wheel is going to go I also put a little bit right right on the groove behind this gear. I put a little right in here. This is spring loaded. It has to be because when you push this over the the gear drive in there, it has to have a little bit of room to move to wiggle on there. And I'll just go ahead and Okay, you've gotten to the point where you've got your hand wheel back on. Now we have to put on this washer. It does go a certain way. These little nubs have to be sticking out. Set that on there. Start screwing on the thumb screw. And you want it to be situated so you can tighten this and not hit one of those knobs and then loosen it and still not hit one. So you can put this on either way so you can get this wrong this is the correct way just the way I have it here if yours isn't working in that the correct way just turn it 180 degrees but I got lucky and put it on the correct way the first time so I can go ahead and tighten this up and then the screw will have to get run in like so Okay, I'll tighten that properly later, but that way when you back this off, it'll hit one of the nubs on that washer, but your hand wheel is loose. And then when you go this way, your hand wheel's tightened before it hits that the other nub on that washer. That's the purpose of those being on there. And now we have a running machine. If you get to this point and you want to run your machine a little bit, do lift the presser foot off the feed dogs just so it doesn't cause wear on those and go ahead and let it run in for a while just to kind of get all your all the oil and grease worked in the machine this uh, bottom winding wheel is just rock hard I'll have to get this off here and replace this that's very simple to do and uh, then I'll have to adjust this next video I'm gonna just go over everything before I make the final video on this where I'll demonstrate it actually sewing some material and uh, I'll probably show how to adjust this this uh, bottom winder here because if you, you don't want to get it too tight all right that's it so far on the 201-2 it's come along really well everything's working after doing a complete refurbish on the machine and cleaning up the motor with all the new grease and whatnot I do like to just go to an electronic foot pedal, that way I know I'm getting full power going to the motor. The machine's going to run the best it possibly can. If you have your machine in a cabinet, I did make another video on these foot pedals where you would have to rewire your, your old pedal for it to fit in the cabinet properly. But I just prefer these. It, it is unplugged. Um, I prefer these because it gives you a bigger surface area to push with your foot. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you in the next one where we're going to show this all done and actually sewing something. See ya.